That may be the greatest catch I've ever seen in my life. Okay, I, I know we said we were going to do this last week, and I probably did a pretty bad job, but we're going to go through, we're going to talk about the players at the top of this list as fast as I can. That way we can go as deep as possible. I want to get to 30, 36 wide receivers on this video so I can try to discuss every single player that you're going to be thinking about starting this week. But of course, before we do anything, you know, we have to give away some free Fantasy Flock Network hats. And the winners for this video are going to be MG and Gabe. Of course, thank you all so much for being a part of the Flock and supporting the channel. If you have not done so already, go down there, drop that like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, even though I know everybody watching this is already subscribed by now. And also, what you can do if you really want to support this channel is go check out Underdog Fantasy. Now, you're going to see their player props popping up on the screen sometimes in this video. Now, no, you can't click on the screen on YouTube and go and bet those player props on them. Of course, you can't do that. This isn't 2023. Probably in a couple of years we can. But what you can do is you can go down to the link in the description of the video or the link in the comment section, and there you can find all those player props. And when you sign up for Underdog Fantasy and you use promo code FLOCK, they'll match that first deposit dollar for dollar up to $100. So please make sure you take advantage of that. And yeah, I think that's all we have. Let's go through and let's dive into these wide receivers. And let's start it off with Cooper Cup. I, I don't need to say anything with Cup here like... He comes out, just in case you didn't see this past week, he comes out, drops another 10 targets, eight receptions, 129 receiving yards, and a receiving touchdown. He has scored 300 fantasy points this season. I, there's nothing to discuss. Let's move to our wide receiver two. Let's go over to Devontae Adams, the guy that I thought was the wide receiver one coming into the season. Nothing happens this past week. He was on bye, but if you look at the previous month, 14, 11, 8, 9 targets, averaging over 10 targets a game. We know historically with Devontae Adams, he should have a touchdown rate higher than league average. He has only scored five touchdowns on over 100 targets so far this season, 115 targets to be exact. That touchdown rate should actually come up. Tough matchup on paper against the Chicago Bears. I'm not too worried. I mean, this Green Bay Packers offense has been so damn efficient so far this season. I think they're they're going to have no issue in moving the ball effectively down the field. Devontae Adams fully healthy. He's going to be in that same tier with Cooper Cup for our wide receiver one. Now let's go down to our tier two. Let's go over to Justin Jefferson, our wide receiver three this week. Another tough matchup on paper. He will be going up against the Pittsburgh Steelers with Justin Jefferson. This is a wide receiver that right now is the wide receiver two on a points per game basis so far this season. I mean, and also you have no Adam Thielen. Removing Adam Thielen, as we've already discussed, you want to naturally assume that the role in the red zone could take a sharp uptick for Justin Jefferson, who maybe is going to be able to just draw more targets once they get inside the 10-yard line, an area of the field that has been dominated by Adam Thielen over the past two to three seasons. So Justin Jefferson, even though it's a tough matchup against Pittsburgh, this past week, 14 targets. I mean, maybe you're going to be assuming that he just gets to 10 targets every single week going forward because I don't know if you know this, but let me brag a little bit on myself. I would say that I am pretty good at just fantasy football in general, pretty good at knowing wide receiver talent. And I spent the weekend doing just an in-depth research project. I, I mean... Literally, I, I could write a thesis paper on this. And my findings were Justin Jefferson is a much better wide receiver than KJ Osborne. Now, I know not a lot of people are going to agree with that. I know a lot of people are going to be, but I promise you guys, Justin Jefferson, he's a pretty good receiver, okay? So with no Adam Thielen here, I think that he's a very safe option to have as a top three guy. Tyreek Hill, our wide receiver four with Tyreek Hill. I mean, you can go through and you can play him with confidence, even though he only drops four points this past week against the Denver Broncos. I know it's, very frustrating with Tyreek Hill. You know, based on the Kansas City Chiefs offense this season, as well as just the nature of the position that Tyreek Hill plays and the role that he plays in Kansas City, that he will be a little bit more up and down than other wide receivers like Devontae Adams. But you can make an argument that Tyreek Hill has a higher ceiling in fantasy football than anybody else. You see this with the 47 points that he drops back in week four. And with Tyreek Hill here, he's still, I mean, the wide receiver three on a points per game basis so far this season. I mean, the matchup against Las Vegas that in-division game between the Raiders and the Chiefs, usually pretty damn close. I think you can play Tyreek Hill here with confidence. And our wide receiver five, our last guy in this tier, is actually going to be Chris Godwin in a tough matchup 
against the Buffalo Bills. Now, yes, the Buffalo Bills have a good defense, but going back to what we were discussing with the Green Bay Packers going up against Chicago, I'm not worried about Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers not being able to move the ball down the field. They should be able to easily move the ball down the field with Chris Godwin. No Antonio Brown just makes him a dominant wide receiver in fantasy. 17 targets this past week. He drops 30 points. And if anything, he got a little unlucky here. 17 targets, 15 receptions, 143 receiving yards, no receiving touchdowns. I mean, it's not every single week that Gronk's going to be coming away with two of the receiving touchdowns on his own right. I think that with Chris Godwin, I mean, he's a safe option to get to 10 targets in this game. This can be a sneaky shootout between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Buffalo Bills. I don't want to say a sneaky shootout because obviously both offenses are fantastic, but I know a lot of people want to just talk about the fact that these defenses are really good at the same time. Great teams in general, but I do think that we see the Tampa Bay Buccaneers still be able to effectively move the ball down the field. Now let's go down to our next tier. Let's go over to Mike Evans also going up against the Buffalo Bills. I think we have to move Mike Evans a tier below Chris Godwin from now. And that's just because the addition of Gronk into this offense, because the difference between Chris Godwin and Mike Evans is Mike Evans is the receiver that relies a little bit more on that touchdown upside. He relies a little bit more on that touchdown rate, the role in the red zone that you could have a six, five wide receiver that doesn't really have any yards after the catchability. Of course, you still love Mike Evans and he's still very talented. 10 targets, seven receptions, 99 receiving yards this past week. I just think that his odds of walking away with a touchdown are going to be a little bit lowered. Now, our next player is going to be Stefan Diggs in this tier going up against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. This same matchup, as we've discussed, I think this is going to be a shootout game now. With Stephon Diggs, I know he had a bad week this past week on Monday night against the New England Patriots, only walking away with nine fantasy points. To be completely honest, this was a great game from Stephon Diggs. Considering the weather that you had, like... Literally, he had more receptions than the New England Patriots had pass attempts. That's significant. I, I think that this game's being played in Tampa. I mean, of course, got to represent the home city. But nonetheless, I think that here with Stephon Diggs, it's going to be a shootout game. You can have him as a top 10 wide receiver. And then Deontay Johnson as our wide receiver eight in this same tier. Deontay Johnson, we've been disrespecting the man, ranking him as a high-end wide receiver two, a low-end wide receiver one. We need to move him to that mid-wide receiver one conversation because right now on a points per game basis he's hovering around the wide receiver seven so far this season in fantasy and to go along with this you're looking at the past month talk about target volume 13 13 14 11 targets he, he's a monster he, he, he is a monster in Pittsburgh. You go through, you play him as a top 10 wide receiver. The matchup against Minnesota, not too bad at all. Let's have him at wide receiver eight. Now let's go down a tier. Let's go over to a wide receiver. We told everybody to play this past week and didn't really work out. Let's go over to DeAndre Hopkins. Now y'all know with DeAndre Hopkins, we were saying that he was fully healthy, that you didn't have to be worrying about anything. Just go through and play him. And then you were also going to be looking at an area where you should just play Kyler Murray as well is they got the extended rest period. They probably shouldn't even miss that much time, but you did just have this general manager admitting that they were being as safe as they could with the combination of DeAndre Hopkins and Kyler Murray. They were both clearly fully healthy when they came back. DeAndre Hopkins plays damn near every single snap. The issue is the game just gets completely out of hand here where the Arizona Cardinals don't have to throw the ball at all and they can just lean on the run. A little bit of a different scenario this week. Now, I know he is going to be going up against Jalen Ramsey. Obviously, Ramsey is one of the best defensive backs in football. But at the same time, this will be a game against the Los Angeles Rams that you just assume they're going to have to throw the ball. It's not going to be like Chicago where they can just go out there and run it by the time they get to the second half. So I think that with DeAndre Hopkins, I'm going to have him yet again as a top 10 wide receiver. This past week, the passing volume wasn't there with the entire offense, but DeAndre Hopkins clearly proved that he's going to be healthy. And this is going to be one of the highest scoring offenses every single week, regardless of matchup. Another very much shootout potential game. And now our next wide receiver in this year will be CeeDee Lamb at wide receiver 10. With CeeDee Lamb, I mean, we haven't seen him in... A Quite a while. I mean, last time we saw him was last Thursday, where 13 targets, 7 receptions, 89 receiving yards. Now, Amari Cooper wasn't 100%. Apparently, Amari Cooper almost missed that game with that illness. But nonetheless, I think you should have Amari Cooper after a 10-day rest period be completely fine going up and traveling to Washington to play the Washington football team. You should have Michael Gallup 100% fine as well. I mean, go throw in Dalton Schultz to this scenario. Now, still, this is going to be one of the most productive offenses in the NFL. But I think that that volume that C.D. Lamb saw, the 13 targets, that's not going to be something that we can project going forward. So we will have C.D. Lamb down here closer to uh, low end wide receiver one high end wide receiver two than the mid wide receiver one we had him previously at 
And now our last wide receiver in this year, I'm ranking him here because I'm recording this on Tuesday. We have reports saying that he is probably going to play this week. Debo Samuel. Now, of course, we're going to have to monitor the practice reports. And even if Debo Samuel plays, I'm going to have him down here in this tier. I mean, with Debo Samuel going up against the Cincinnati Bengals, not a bad matchup by any means. But a big thing with Debo is this is a groin injury. It's very different than, I mean, the black and white nature of having a concussion, being on the COVID list, where, you know, when those players come back from an injury related to that, while yes, it may impact their long term health to have a concussion and you hate it for their well-being still from just a fantasy football perspective, you know they'll be playing every single snap. You know that they'll have their usual role their first week back from that concussion. But here, it's a little bit different with a player with a groin injury, a soft tissue injury. Historically, Debo Samuel has dealt with a considerable amount of these. I think you should be a little bit worried here. But nonetheless, I think that this is still the wide receiver four on a points per game basis so far this season. Clearly, he's not really been used as a prototypical wide receiver over the past two weeks he's played. I mean, he's walked away with 16 and 20 fantasy points, and he's only had one reception in each game. They're using him a little bit more as a running back with more carries than he's actually had targets in both games, which is a little bit weird here. But nonetheless, he is clearly that weapon for a very creative offensive mind in Kyle Shanahan that has been coming through with elite level production. I'm not going to have him as his usual high and wide receiver one because I will be a little bit worried about the soft tissue injury. Now let's go down a tier. Let's go over to our wide receiver 12. Let's go over to Mike Williams. Remember the days when Mike Williams was ranked as a wide receiver one? Well, we are going to be right back there. Not necessarily because Mike Williams had a great game this past week. Now, yes, Mike Williams did have a strong performance. He had over 100 receiving yards. He only had seven targets, though. The main reason Mike Williams is going to be here as that high in wide receiver two, low in wide receiver one, is you have no Keenan Allen this week. So I think you can be very excited about Mike Williams going up against the Giants. I mean, with or without Keenan Allen, you know the Chargers are going to be able to effectively move the ball down the field. I think you get closer to the 12, 10, 16 targets that Mike Williams had at the beginning of the season because I hate to break it to you. I mean, Jalen Guyton, he's a field stretching wide receiver. He's going to go through and he's just going to be stretching the field where Mike Williams will be the prototypical X here. Also, you better be bumping up Austin Eckler. Austin Eckler is the running back one this week. Now, going over in the same tier, we will have both of these Cincinnati Bengals wide receivers going up against the 49ers. Now, yes, it is a tough matchup, but I mean, here, you just know that the passing volume will be there in Cincinnati, especially considering the fact that they should be playing a competitive game with the 49ers here. Nobody's expecting the Cincinnati Bengals to come out here and boat race the 49ers. And T. Higgins, we are going to have one spot ranked below Jamar Chase. Yes, I, I know that people are upset with us doing this. Keep in mind, at the beginning part of the season, I mean, halfway through the year when Jamar Chase was dropping 200-yard receiving performances, I was the guy saying, sell high on Chase, buy low on Higgins. Sell high on Chase. Sell. Like People were commenting, oh, this idiot tells us to sell high on Jamar Chase. I'm unsubscribing. Like, trust me, I was getting so much hate for that. Please don't give me hate now that I still have Jamar Chase one spot higher than T. Higgins. It's the wide receiver 1A, wide receiver 1B situation. They're both co-wide receiver 1s in this offense. Now, with Jamar Chase... I do think that this is going to be a wide receiver that is able to kind of skew back to what he was towards the middle part of the year. You know, those wide receivers that are winning off of efficiency like Jamar Chase has all season rather than volume, they're going to be a little bit more volatile, but their ceiling's going to be a little bit higher. I still think you probably want to be playing Jamar Chase over T Higgins, even though Higgins has been dominant. Both guys are high end wide receiver twos. Now let's go to our next wide receiver, our wide receiver 14 in a tough matchup against the Cleveland Browns. Well, let's go over to Hollywood Brown here. And with Hollywood Brown, I know he's been disappointing over the past month. I mean, you're looking at the fact that he scored 9, 13, and 10 fantasy points over the past three weeks. Obviously, he missed that game against the Bears. But what's important here with Hollywood Brown, follow those targets. Follow the workload he is seeing in Baltimore. Rashad Bateman is getting scaled back with his routes run. I mean, Rashad Bateman's running less routes than Sammy Watkins, less routes than Devin Duvernay at this point. And with Hollywood Brown, this is a wide receiver that's averaged over 10 targets a game over the past four weeks that he's played. He should be fully healthy going into this game against the Cleveland Browns. The Browns have a very good run defense. Maybe they look to go and just lean a little bit more on the pass. And what should be a competitive game here with the Browns coming out of the bye. 
And now our next wide receiver will be Amari Cooper going up against the Washington football team. Now, yes, Amari looked horrible this past week. Remember, we had reports saying that Amari Cooper was maybe not even going to be playing without he was not feeling like he's fully recovered from COVID. And with Amari comes out two targets, two receptions, 41 receiving yards. I mean, now he's had 10 days to rest. No excuses for Amari Cooper. This matchup against Washington, they have a much better run defense than they have a pass defense. I think you see Dallas leaning on the pass a little bit. And now our next wide receiver will be Hunter Renfro going up against the Kansas City Chiefs. With Renfro, if you have no Darren Waller in this game, which right now Darren Waller is listed as questionable, he is a must-start wide receiver. I mean, with no Darren Waller, with no Henry Ruggs, they simply don't have the weapons to be going anywhere else other than Hunter Renfro. This matchup in particular against the Kansas City Chiefs should be a close in-division game, which is competitive and skews the Las Vegas Raiders a little bit more pass-happy. And our last wide receiver in this tier is actually, you know what? No, he can't be in this tier. We're going to drop him down one. Let's go down below. And our wide receiver 17 will be Tyler Lockett. Now you get the small bump up with the Seattle Seahawks this past week. But I mean, a big thing in that is just the long touchdown that you had from Travis. Homer, kind of swinging the game a little bit. That's not going to be predictive going forward. But with Tyler Lockett, yet again, eight targets, seven receptions, 68 receiving yards, and the receiving touchdown. He drops damn near 20 fantasy points against the 49ers. Obviously, this 49ers team has a significantly better defense than the Houston Texans and you are looking at Russell Wilson and like I said I mean some of these plays were a little fluky last week against the 49ers for the Seahawks but still Wilson is trending in the right direction definitely I mean with Russell Wilson you just see him go from 161 207 247 and 231 for his passing yards I mean two passing touchdowns each of the past two weeks this offense is trending in the right direction. It's a really nice matchup against Houston. We're going to have Tyler Lockett at wide receiver 17. And our wide receiver 18 is going to be Terry McLaurin. Now, with Terry McLaurin, I, I just feel bad. I have been the guy coming out and saying, okay, start Terry, buy him low, buy him low, buy him low. Just over the past month, and y'all know I hated Terry McLaurin coming into the season. But over the past month, we've been screaming to buy low because, I mean, the role has presumably been there for Washington. Well, it hasn't been working out. I mean, if you're looking at Terry McLaurin, I mean, essentially since week four, like let's remove the first month of the season for Terry McLaurin, eight, six, 25, six, 11, 21, nine, five games. He has more games with less than 10 fantasy points than more than 10 fantasy points. Now you don't have Logan Thomas. You maybe don't have Ricky Seals Jones in this game either. So he has to get targeted. The issue is, I mean, kind of what we were talking about with Terry McLaurin coming into the season. I don't care if you want to make the argument that he's the most talented wide receiver. Like, I, that doesn't really matter. If he is getting triple team, you can't come out here and say, hey, we got to rank Terry McLaurin as a top 12 wide receiver. He's going to get triple team, so he's not going to be productive and fancy. That, that, that doesn't line up. I mean, I think the production just simply hasn't been there. Now, the upside is definitely there, which is why I think you have to go through and rank him as a mid wide receiver too. But I think you could consider benching him. And now our next wide receiver will be DK Metcalf going up against the Houston Texans. I mean, with Metcalf, very similar to Lockett. He's actually getting just as much volume. I mean, with DK Metcalf, this is a wide receiver that yet again comes out and he sees eight targets in this offense. Now, yes, Tyler Lockett's the guy that comes away with the production, but still to get targeted at that heavy rate, you can't be excited about DK Metcalf with this offense trending in the right direction. And our wide receiver 20 will be DJ Moore with DJ Moore. I mean, I just think that you have no idea what to expect with Carolina. No idea what to expect with Carolina Panthers. As we've discussed, if Cam Newton is the starting quarterback here, you can be excited about Cam Newton for his own fantasy football output. But as we've said, and I know we got hate for this earlier in the year, Cam Newton's not going to be elevating the wide receivers in Carolina because if Cam Newton was just a quality starting quarterback at this point, you would have seen Washington sign him. You would have seen Miami sign him. You would have seen, I mean, Seattle sign him when they went through and they played Geno Smith, Taylor Heineke, and I mean, Jacoby Brissett this season. Like, please don't convince yourself that Cam Newton is going to be the answer. I don't even know if Cam Newton's starting this week. I just don't think there are any solid options at the quarterback position for the Carolina Panthers. Now, yes, they do have a strong matchup this week against the Atlanta Falcons. But with DJ Moore, I mean, going back to week four, like the first month of the season, DJ Moore since then, he's had such a low ceiling. He has not gotten to 20 fantasy points a single week since the first month. Coming out of the bye week, maybe you're a little bit more excited. But now let's go down a tier. Let's go over to our wide receiver 21. Let's go to Elijah Moore and one of the worst offenses in the NFL with Zach Wilson. Now with Elijah Moore, the reason you have to pay him your respect this week, and we are a little bit lower than him last week on this list, was because last week you had Corey Davis playing. 
Now this week, um, Corey Davis out for the season. So Elijah Moore is going to be that dominant target. It's a tough matchup against the New Orleans Saints, but based on the role that he has in New York and based on the talent that he has, I think he's still going to be a top 24 wide receiver. And our next wide receiver, wide receiver 22, will be Brandon Ayuk. Now, keep in mind, with Brandon Ayuk, he will skyrocket up this list if Debo Samuel's out. Now, I know that George Kittle stole every single ounce of production last week in San Francisco. But, I mean, breaking news, George Kittle's not going to be dropping over 40 fantasy points every single week in San Francisco this season. So, I think that if you were not to have Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk does get a bump up here. Now, wide receiver 23, we will have Brandon Cooks. I mean, with Brandon Cooks, I honestly maybe want to lower him further than this. The issue is, like, where are we going elsewhere? Like, Brandon Cooks, I, I guess, you know what? We can probably lower him. He's the wide receiver 31 so far this season. Yes, he comes away with eight fantasy. Like, what's the real upside with Cooks? This offense is just not going to be able to move the ball down the field. Now, yes, it's against a soft Seattle Seahawks defense. We'll still have him at wide receiver 23 because he is seeing such a high percentage of his team's targets, but definitely a player falling. In our wide receiver 24, we will have Darnell Mooney going up against the Green Bay Packers. Now, with Darnell Mooney, I think that we may get Allen Robinson back this week. If you do not have Allen Robinson, then, of course, Darnell Mooney is going to be higher on this list than this. You'll probably go to the top of this tier. Or Darnell Mooney disappointing this past week. Good for me because y'all know I didn't like Darnell Mooney coming into the season. And, you know, everybody in fantasy loves Darnell Mooney. So we had a bunch of people in the live chat telling me how stupid I was. And that, I mean, Darnell Mooney was going to be just some great wide receiver. We said if he was a top 15 option in fantasy, I would drink a beer out of my shoe. So happy to see that he is slowing down a bit here. But still, if you were not to have Allen Robinson, you can get a lot more excited. Tough matchup against the Green Bay Packers. Now, our next wide receiver will be Chase Claypool, wide receiver 25. Claypool going up against the Minnesota Vikings on Thursday night. Claypool, very low floor, very high ceiling. You don't like to see the role that Pat Frymuth has in this offense. You don't like to see the fact that Deontay Johnson's getting 13, 14 targets every single week. You don't like to see the fact that Ben Roethlisberger simply cannot push the ball down the field. So we will have Claypool down at wide receiver 25. Wide receiver 26, we got Jerry Judy going up against the Detroit Lions. A very bad offense. I mean, at this point, this offense is just one that I think we should be entirely avoiding outside of the starting running back here, whether that is going to be Javante Williams and it should be Javante Williams. I think we almost just have to go through and treat this as if it's the Cleveland Browns where you don't necessarily know what wide receiver is going to lead the team in targets. You don't know if there's going to be enough passing volume to go around. I think you should be avoiding almost all these guys. And now let's go down another tier. Let's go over to our wide receiver 26. This will be Van Jefferson. We said it a week ago. I'm going to repeat it this week. Van Jefferson is the wide receiver two in Los Angeles. Now it's not Odell Beckham Jr. I know Odell walks away with a touchdown this past week, but Odell didn't really play that many snaps. I think you can make the argument that maybe he isn't fully healthy. Now he does get 10 fantasy points, but he only had two receptions. Like he gets there. He gets lucky with the touchdown. Van Jefferson is going to be the guy to own. He plays way more snaps. He runs way more routes. Michael Gallup going to be our next wide receiver, wide receiver 27 going up against Washington. Gallup is an option that I think has to scale back if you get a fully healthy Amari Cooper this week, but it will be a very productive offense overall. And we know Dak Prescott's going to be historically very efficient. And Washington, as we've discussed, has a better run defense than a pass defense. Wide receiver 28, Russell Gage going up against the Carolina Panthers with Russell Gage. A fantastic week this past week, but I've told so many people before, it's hard to go through and buy in to Russell Gage. It's, it's hard to buy in to what you're going to be looking at with a wide receiver that has let us down so many times before. I mean, he's played entire game, seeing every single snap played, and he's walked away with zero targets before. So he's going to be a player still with a very low floor, despite having a very strong game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers this past week. And our last wide receiver in this tier will be Kadarius Tony. With Tony, don't know if he's going to play, but if he does play, I mean, I think that you have to be very hesitant knowing that it's a tough matchup against the Los Angeles Chargers. You have a much better pass defense than a run defense. And at the same time with Kadarius Tony, I mean, we don't even know whose quarterback's going to be. We don't know if it's going to be Daniel Jones, Jay Fromm, Mike Lennon. I, I don't know. So we'll have Kadarius Tony at the very bottom of this list. But yeah, thank you so much for everybody who's watched this video. Make sure you go down there, drop that like, leave a comment, letting me know how stupid I am. Subscribe to the channel. And when you do so, you get entered in to win a free Fantasy Flock Network hat. And yeah, I think that's all I got for you. I really hope that y'all have a great day. And I really hope I see y'all out in the live stream tonight.